Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SA Accounting Academy. Uh, here's a short clip on one of our previous webinars. I hope that you really do enjoy it. Good morning, everyone. So a warm welcome to you on this uh, slightly chilly, very windy day from the West Rand, where I am at the moment. Great. Hope you guys are ready. You can drink coffee to your heart's content. While I'm busy talking, I will also be giving you a break halfway through just so that you can go and stretch your legs. They call it a body break, apparently. So I'll give you a body break halfway through. All right. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Leti Janse van Vieren, and I will be your facilitator for the next two hours. We, have, we are looking at our monthly compliance and legislation update, our MCLU, for the month of April. So all the legislative changes for the month of April are what we are discussing today. For those of you that have not attended my webinars, that's who I am, what I do, what I look like. So let's get straight into our agenda. Under the table of contents, you'll see the reason why I give you this is so that you can apportion it. If you want to go and see, for instance, um, how much time you've spent on tax, you can then go to the tax section and see, okay, there were 13 items. How long did we spend on this during the two hours? So it gives you an idea of where the meaty sections lie. And you can see under accounting update, there's six items, but believe me, the majority of them come from National Treasury, so it's more for the, for the governmental departments. Under the auditing update, we've got some changes there, all right? So auditing, we've got seven items. Oops. And then um, under tax, we've got 13 Quite a lot of them I found as publications or letters that were sent out that are not always freely available to everybody. And those those pages that I come across where uh, they explain what the updates were or something, because there really weren't a lot. There's absolutely no court cases. Remember, during the month of April, we had we had uh, four day work weeks almost through the entire April from Easter straight through to. Uh, Freedom Day and the 1st of May and everything. So I think for that reason, no court cases really were finalized. No, there's nothing on the SARS website. Um, and strangely enough, nothing under employment law. There have been a couple of cases, but nothing mind-blowing and nothing ground-shifting at this stage where I can say, okay, this is something that I really want to share with everybody because it creates a precedent for, for future reference. So um, employment law, there's nothing this month. Other laws and regulations, there's a couple of important items in there. Under auditing, there's a couple of important ones. And then under the regulator news, you'll see we've got 19 items here. So there's a lot. And even the item that I have under general announcements is, uh, it's not so very general. It actually relates more to ethics. Um, I know... Karen always gives you quite a nice lot of a variety of articles, but um, you'll see that our session is already so jam-packed that there will only, there was only enough space for one. Right. So that is our table of contents. With the cold front that we had last week, and we're still feeling the ends of it, my quote for today is, if the world is cold, make it your business to build fires. That's what Horace Trouble said. And I fully agree with that. You know, we all have to make do with what we have. And this is how you survive. If life hands you lemons, you make lemonade and you put up a stand and you sell it. So it's about adapting to our, our circumstances and our surroundings. And uh, I think COVID has definitely taught us how to do that. It's just a question of getting that mind shift. Instead of always just seeing problems, oh, it's cold, it's cold, it's cold, it's cold. Look at the solutions, and when you find a solution, be thankful for what you have. If you are, if you realize it's cold outside, and you're inside and it's still cold, realize that you are already not in the freezing cold outside. So recognize where you are and find your solutions from there on. All right. That's my little Letty 101 philosophy for today. For our accounting update, under the IFRS monthly news summary, there really wasn't a lot. There's a lot of um, projects that's on the way, and uh, um, I know Karen deals with this every second month 
on a con quite a nice basis. I like to wait until the stuff has come into effect before I go into the detail of that. So the IFRS monthly news summary, there was nothing really new or important. There's some podcasts that are available, but nothing major. All right. The important one for me this month is the psychoeducational material. And I put this under the accounting update, even though it deals with IAS 12 on income taxes. Okay. So it is income, income tax. Great. Income taxes. Why is this important? This was issued because we've had a change in the tax rate. So if we ask ourselves, what is the impact of the company income tax rate changes that was announced in Feb on the current tax and the deferred tax balances? Because remember, your current tax is supposed to be on your current tax one, and your deferred tax has got to be on your future tax rate. So you have to take that into account now for your 2022 20, year end, right? So you've got to be able to, to do that. And why this is important is because in IAS 12, they also talk about FRP 1, and they talk about when the change in tax rate is regarded as being substantively enacted. That's the, re that's the requirement in IAS 12. And this document that Psyche issued then highlights it to say, the announcement that the minister made on the 23rd of Feb with the budget speech is substantively enacted. And it then goes on to explain the requirements for the change in the tax rate from 28% to 27%. So I want to spend some time with you here and quickly go and open up this document for you. Okay. This is what it looks like. You'll see it's not a major document. It's six pages long. It's really not that much. Is it big enough for everybody? Can you all see clearly on my screen? So this is just me referring you to it. Remember that you'll have it in your um on your side you'll have it as well okay so these what they look at guidance from ias 12 and frp1 that i've already given you basically um the gist of it now is the tax rate considered to be substantively enacted and that's where we ask the question and they answer it here to say yes and then very important in here how to apply the tax rate change and then looking at a conclusion. So I'm going to scroll through the document just so that I can take you through this. Right? Here's just where they say this is made for, for members, associates, or any third party. If you use this document, you are not allowed to point a finger at Psyche and say, oh, well, you did this, and this was wrong, and that was wrong. You use this at your own risk. Okay. So there we go. And this is both for interim as well as annual financial statements. So it's got to be for all of them, right? There's your FRP1 and there's the link. And you'll see in the in the document, you can actually access it from the PDF document by just clicking on the link, right? There's the background where they talk about what it is, that there's the guidance. Is it substantively enacted? And they get to the conclusion to say, yes, it is, okay? The tax laws were enacted into law during January, but would only come into operation for years of commencement on or after the date when the reduction was announced. Okay, so that's the date of 23, of 23 Feb 2022. So that's when the, the, the tax rules come in. Right, so let's go and have a look how to apply the tax rate. You must then go and apply it for, it says a change in tax rate, could be announced during the year as being applicable in the following year, in which case the current tax in the balance sheet would be based on the previous tax rate, whereas the deferred tax rate, the, the deferred tax balance, would be based on the new tax rate. So current tax still on the 28%, deferred tax on the 27%. Right. So that's what that's what they mean here. So all for all South African companies, it says they would still measure their current tax at 28% for years ending before 31 March 2023. Current tax, okay? 
companies will, let me just highlight this because this is an important sentence. For years ending on or after 31 March, their current tax will be at 27%. I hope that you enjoyed that video. For more of our webinar videos, go to www.accountingacademy.co.za. Thank you and have a lovely day.